Oh wait, no longer greatness has arrived. Welcome to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast made by the players for the players. I am your host, Joseph, a.k.a. Mr. Babbitt, and it is here where me and my best friend Kyle talk about the latest, the greatest in all things PlayStation. Of course, if you're listening to this show, you can listen wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube at the Trophy Room Show. And if you like what you hear, please consider dropping us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or toss us a buck our way over at patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. But before I introduce the best co-host, the greatest co-host, whoever is, whoever will be, I need to let you know that this is an emergency episode. Some breaking news, some huge news has dropped, and we are covering solely the Bloomberg article by Jason Schreier, talking about Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within the Sony empire. That said, we have our uh, episode of this week, so make sure, if you're done listening to this, you're listening to this week's show as well just right there in your podcast feed so with all that said and with all that out of the way the greatest co-host whoever is whoever will be mr kyle stevenson how are you sir i'm like filled with energy i just energy uh th- there's there's a lot of things about this topic uh that i want to say and put out there but i yeah. don't want to spend hours just writing tweets <laughs> so I'm happy, I gotcha. I'm happy we're doing this yeah, because and I'm sorry I didn't get to your text. No, 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 uh, I, not I, your I fault at all, yeah. Joe. There's okay. many times right, you've good. texted me and it's taken me literally <laughs> days to get back to you. I, I get it. No, and yes. it's just like this is. I think this deserves to to be talked about on the on our feed and as an emergency kind of like episode. But I think we're both on the same page with yeah. with what this article is talking about. I think this needs to be out there for everybody else that is so reactionary and like... And, and let's be real. Yeah. This episode that we had, the the real episode this week that we have out, please, again, listen to it because uh, one of our best episodes yet, a lot of people telling me that. It's amazing to hear. But we had some choice words for PlayStation, right? We weren't that positive. It's been a rough few weeks for PlayStation. And I feel like this news... Out of uh, uh, Bloomberg, I can understand why people are running with the hot takes. That being said, Kyle, mm-hmm. you're the one that said we need to do this episode. I yeah, woke up this do. morning, I watched a, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier, and I was like, oh, this is great. Life <laughs> life, life has peaked, and it looks like it has, because now everybody, yet again, is upset at PlayStation. But is it an actual... Anger, or are we in our feelings here? And that's what's going to be really interesting about this show is where you and I land on it at the end of the day. So, Kyle and, and audience, I want I want you to sit back, relax, because this is a long article, and there's not a lot that we can't take out. Um, we want to give Jason Schreier the the proper due here, and we don't want to give you misinformation. So we are reading the entire article yeah. to make sure that we are as factual as possible. Mm-hmm. So, with all that said, Kyle, take it away. Uh, Sony's obsession with blockbusters is stirring unrest within PlayStation Empire. A small team had big ambitions for a Last of Us remake, but Sony handed the work to Star Studio Naughty Dog. Of course, this is Jason Schreier. This is his latest Bloomberg article. Uh, Sony Corporation's visual arts service group has long been the unsung hero of many hit PlayStation video games. The San Diego-based operation helps finish off games designed at other Sony-owned studios with animation, art, or other content and development. But about three years ago, a handful of influential figures within the visual arts service group decided they wanted to have more creative control and lead lead game direction rather than being supporting actors on popular titles such as Spider-Man and Uncharted. Michael Mumbauer, who took over direction of the visual arts service group in 2007, recruited a group of about 30 developers internally and from neighboring game studios to form a new development unit within Sony. The idea was to expand upon some of the company's most successful franchises, and the team began working on a remake of the 2013 hit The Last of Us for the PlayStation 5. But Sony never fully acknowledged the team's existence or gave them the funding and support needed to succeed in the highly competitive video game market, according to people involved. The studio never even got its own name. Instead, Sony moved ownership of The Last of Us remake to its original creator, Naughty Dog, a Sony-owned studio behind many of the company's best-selling games and an HBO television series in development. 
Deflated, the small group's leadership has largely disbanded, according to interviews with eight people familiar with the operation. Many, including Mumbauer, have left the company entirely. The team's failure highlights the complex hierarchy of video game development and, in particular, Sony's conservative approach to making games for the PlayStation 5. The Japanese conglomerate owns about a dozen studios across the world as part of its PlayStation Studios label, but in recent years it has prioritized games made by its most successful developers. Studios such as Santa Monica, California-based Naughty Dog, and Amsterdam-based Guerrilla Games spend tens of millions of dollars to make games with the expectation that the investments will pay off exponentially. And they usually do. Sony's focus on exclusive blockbusters has come at the expense of niche teams and studios within the PlayStation organization, leading to high turnover and less choice for players. Last week, Sony reorganized a development office in Japan, resulting in mass departures of people who worked on less well-known but acclaimed games such as Gravity Rush and Everybody's Golf. The company has informed developers that it long, no longer wants to produce smaller games that are only successful in Japan, Bloomberg has reported. This fixation on teams that churn out hits is creating unrest across Sony's portfolio of game studios. Oregon-based Sony Ben, best known for the 2019 open-world action game Days Gone, tried unsuccessfully to pitch a sequel that year. Although the first game has been profitable, its development had been lengthy and critical reception was mixed, so Days Gone 2 wasn't seen as a viable option. Instead, one team at the studio was assigned to help Naughty Dog with a multiplayer game, while a second group was assigned to work on a new Uncharted game with supervision from Naughty Dog. Some staff, included top leads, were unhappy with this arrangement and left. Ben's developers feared they might be absorbed into Naughty Dog, and the studio's leadership asked to be taken off the Uncharted project. They got their wish last month and are now working on a new game of their own that will be part of a brand new franchise. The team originally planned on a remake of the first Uncharted game, released by Naughty Dog in 2007. That idea quickly fizzled because it would be expensive and require too much added design work. Instead, the team settled on a remake of Naughty Dog's 2013 melancholic zombie hit, The Last of Us. At the time, Naughty Dog was in the thick of development on the sequel. If Mumbauer's crew remade the first game to have a similar look and feel, the two games could be packaged together for the PlayStation 5. In theory, this would be a less expensive proposition than remaking Uncharted, since The Last of Us was more modern and wouldn't require too many gameplay overhauls. Then once Mumbauer's group had established itself, it could go on to remake the first Uncharted game and other titles down the road. But pivoting from doing finishing work for other games to making your own is difficult, since original development teams are competing against hundreds of other teams from all over the world with varying levels of experiences and successes, said Dave Lang, founder of Iron Galaxy Studios, which has served as a support team and a development studio. Quote, the people funding the work are often risk averse, and if they have to pick between a team that's done it before and someone trying to do it on their own for the first time, I can see why some people pick the prior developer over the latter, he said. That's just what Sony did. The Mumbauer's project, codenamed TIX, was approved on a probationary, or is that T1X? It might be T1. T1X mm. was uh, approved on a probationary basis. But Sony kept the team's existence a secret and refused to give them a budget to hire more people, leading many to wonder if the company was really committed to letting the team build a new studio. Still, the small team kept working, and by the spring of 2019, they had completed a section of the game designed to showcase how the rest would look and feel. At that time, Sony was going through a management shuffle, and the new boss wasn't impressed. Herman Hulse, the former lead of Guerrilla Games, was named head of PlayStation Worldwide Studios in November 2019. He thought the remake project was too expensive, and asked why the planned budget for T1X was so much higher than remakes Sony had made in the past. Just when it hoped it to enter production on the remake of The Last of Us, Mumbauer's team got called in to help when another big game fell behind. Release of The Last of Us Part Two it had been pushed to 2020 from 2019, and Naughty Dog needed the visual arts service group to polish it off. Then the roles got reversed. Sony sent word that that after the completion of The Last of Us Part Two, some people from Naughty Dog would help out with T1X. Mumbauer's team saw this as their short-lived autonomy being stripped. Dozens of Naughty Dog staff were joining the project, and some had actually worked on the original The Last of Us, giving them more weight in discussions about T1X's direction. The game was moved under Naughty Dog's budget, which Sony gave more leeway than the visual arts service group. But those who had wanted independence were disappointed. By the end of 2020, most of the T1X's, T1X team's top staff had left, including Mumbauer and the game's director, David Hall. Today, the T1X project remains in development at Naughty Dog with assistance from Sony's visual arts support group. The future of the remainder of Mumbauer's team, which has come to be jokingly referred to as Naughty Dog South, remains unclear. 
Kyle, what a story. So what we're essentially the story is following is from what I understand the San Diego team, right? That was supposed to take over this uncharted game that looks like never happened. We saw creative leaves leave. I believe uh, the creative lead there left to do the Marvel's Avengers game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we saw people come and go and what eventually happening was Naughty Dog kind of overseeing that small group and merging that group into theirs without them saying you're part of the team, right? Uh, you're seeing this original idea that they had where, you know, they're, this team is a, uh, supposed to finish off and polish games as they come out and now they're they were tasked to re remake a few of their games, some of their most popular ones being Uncharted and or The Last of Us, and then seeing that handed over to then Naughty Dog, right? So the big story here, the summation of all that is Naughty Dog, and this comes from Nibel, Naughty Dog is apparently working on a Last of Us remake for the PS5. And... Bigger news here, though, is that Sony seems to prioritize big teams and big games above everything else, with a, a heavy focus on hits only, it seems. Kyle, what are your thoughts here? Sony, yet again, we got a Last of Us remaster on yeah. PlayStation 4 six years ago. Why the hell are we remaking this game again? It's fine. Yeah, um... Yeah, there's a there's a lot to take out of this, but yeah, number one, first and foremost, we don't need a remake of the Last of Us one. We don't. So we, why so why is Sony making it if we so, don't need so it? So here here's the thing I think a lot of people are, are overlooking. Uh -huh. I think that this all started because Mumbauer, the direction of the Visual Arts Service Group, they decided that they were like, hey, let's do a remake of The Last of Us. It wasn't Naughty Dog's decision. It wasn't really Sony's decision. They had a, an idea to remake it to show off that they could do more. Mm -hmm. So I, I, and then Sony, Herman saw it and, and was like, I'd rather trust that in the hands of Naughty the Dog themselves, the people right. that made it themselves, which I totally understand that. But even at that point, we don't need a remake. We don't. Mm -hmm. The remaster is fine. The remaster is perfect. It's is it fine, Kyle? Yeah. Why Why would you say it's not fine? Everybody's trashing this. And they're like, we don't need another Last of Us to, you know, remake or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, we absolutely do. Mm. Absolutely, this makes 110% sense. They said it in the article, right? Like, remakes are easier and cheaper to pull off. Mm -hmm. And why not? ship out your most popular IP, remake it, put the Last of Us 2 engine in it, right? Overhaul it for sure, all that jazz. When the show comes out next year or the year, whenever whenever the Last of Us series oh, comes out. Oh, I see out, what you're coming to say, yeah. And then all of a sudden you have eyes on this TV show and people that have never known the Last of Us or, or whatnot now have the ability to try it out for the first time. Do you want them to have a good experience or a 2010 experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's that's the thing I, I feel like we're losing track of here is that I think what Last of Us came out 2012, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. 2013, I think. 2013. Is that by the time this game does come out on the PlayStation 5, it's almost going to be almost 10, 10 years since, since its original release. And if you're going to have people play that game for the first time, you want them to have the modern experience. So does it make sense for us as gamers? Am I interested in a Last of Us remake? It's one of my favorite games of all time. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to discount, you know, Jane, Dick, and Harry... Because they've never played it before. And if we could get more PlayStation fans in this ecosystem, that's what Sony's betting on right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes sense. Is it exciting? No. <laughs> but it makes sense. Yeah. And, and for I everyone who says, is it going to look, I I'm not interested in it. But am I going to probably buy it in two years? The yes. Yeah. I it's the same, th same reason why I said we didn't need a part two. But I yeah. bought it, and I love it. It was my game of the year. I adore that game. But we yeah. didn't need it. And I, I yeah. think a, a first remake a, or a remake of the first game is in the same boat. We don't need it, but you 
damn well know everyone's going to buy that game and play yeah. it again. We didn't need a new- Snyder no. cut. That no, game we already, or that movie already came out. We didn't need it to be four hours long, but it is, and it was awesome. I do think, though, that that is just a happy accident that there mm-hmm. we're also getting an HBO adaptation, and this remake was happening. I think that's that that would would work well together, but I don't think that was the plan. Okay. Like, I I don't think they they brought the remake up as a oh, there's a show coming, let's do a remake. Like, I don't think that it's just like a happy mm-hmm. accident kind of thing. But I, I, de- I definitely think, yeah, happy accident, but I think Sony sees that and you're seeing it with all their, their, their super successful games, like Ghost of Tsushima getting a movie, right? Um, you know, I think what was the latest one? Like Horizon Zero Dawn reportedly getting a movie. Uncharted mm-hmm. has a movie. Mm-hmm. Those two things, it makes sense to kind of, you know, bundle the games with the movies or have some type of promotion with them Mm -hmm. it totally makes sense and so i see this and i'm like guys what are we yelling about yeah and and i think that's just a small part of this larger thing like i think the other big thing in here was the the bend studio stuff with days so let's get to that yeah the bend studio stuff is actually what i think is the big takeaway here is that uh, you know, we saw, I believe, some really high level Bend Studio folks. Um, even I believe the co founder leave shortly after that game came out. You know, some people are like, Yeah, we've been gone. I remember there was a story of like um, something about Days Gone and people actually finding out a lot of the heads up and left after the game came out. They tried to pitch Days Gone too. It was profitable for them. It looks like it wasn't the big, biggest success in the world, but it was profitable for them. Um, it wasn't cr- critically acclaimed. Mm-hmm. They're not making a Days Gone 2. It's not been greenlit. But Bend is doing something else. Yeah. What are your thoughts there? And, 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 and the fact that Bend was working on a multiplayer game with Naughty Dog and Bend was working on or help working with that Uncharted game. Uh, that w- that was handed over to Naughty Dog. Yeah, and then them fearing that they'd be merged into Naughty Dog. It mm-hmm. seems like there there is, and th- um, there definitely is, from what I know, uh, jealousy towards Naughty Dog from the rest of the Sony team. Everybody sees Naughty Dog as like the favorite child of the bunch, mm-hmm. and they're afraid that like yeah, we work on this Uncharted game. That's to say, it it does you know do well. Are we just going to be merged into Naughty Dog North? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Question, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Is this actually as bad as 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 it seems in terms of the Ben situation here? No. While I love Days Gone One, I think it's extremely underrated. Um, it's a super quality game. I think Sony and Herman looking at this and seeing just how long it took for that game to come out, how much money that game probably costs to make, and the scope of that game maybe being a little bit too big for mm-hmm. Ben to, to handle um, gives them reason to be like, all right, maybe we, we don't need a two at this time. I, 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 I think maybe potentially down the road, they could come back to it. But I think what they say here is they had another pitch and that got greenlit and they're making their, a new franchise, which is another thing that a lot of people are yelling about, about this article that just baffles my mind. It's something that they forget. They're like, Sony's all about sequels and the same IP and all this, like losing the smaller teams, such as like Sony Japan and games like, or, and not losing the team of pixel opus, but experiences like concrete genie, like smaller PlayStation studio stuff. And, original things and we're just mm-hmm. horizon two god of war two you know uncharted five whatever last was part three i i seeing that days gone two didn't get greenlit but they're making a new franchise i think it's getting lost in the in the conversation as well as i i don't see anyone saying like oh three four three another halo game coalition another gears of war game like at Microsoft and Xbox, they have all all their studios do the same franchises for longer periods of time, and and I think it and same thing with Nintendo. How many times are they going to remake Mario franchises and Zelda? And like they have their the same IPs and, and games within those fran- 
franchises and IP, but they don't create new things. And I, and I think so. I'm going to push back on you there. Please push back. I think Xbox has gotten shit for they were known for the longest. I'm saying today, like I'm saying today, a lot of people are are seemingly forgetting. Like Sony has, they all do it. But why is it a big deal for for Sony right now? Um, they all do it, but people, they don't care. They're not mentioning Xbox because Xbox has addressed that with purchasing Ninja Theory. They've addressed it with purchasing Bethesda, Double Fine, all that. Mm -hmm. They've addressed the fact that yes, this is Halo 9. You know, Gears of War 5 is, is, is like actually Gear 6. Forza, God knows how many iterations. Um, they've addressed it by purchasing those studios. Okay. Nintendo gets the, get gets away with it because every like yes they make a shit ton of mario games and remake them and port them and do lazy ports at that i think nintendo gets away with that criticism because you have a 2d mario then you get a 3d mario okay then you get a you know rts mario right like you have a mario franchise that is in multiple genres um, Zelda, it, it, you know, Zeldas don't come out every two years. They come out every like, you know, five or six or so. They, there's, there's time in between Zeldas. Um, and at the same exact time, you know, I, I, though I understand that, I understand the fear that Sony fans have because look, I'm totally fine. You give me, give me a, a God of War sequel. Give me a Horizon sequel. Give me an Uncharted sequel. Fucking give me, give me The Last of Us uh, Part Three. Give me Bloodborne Two. <laughs> How many times? I gotta ask. Uh, I gotta beg. Give me those sequels. They they were they were generational defining. Look at Ghost of Tsushima. Give me a, a Ghost Two. Right. We're concerned because we see what what Uncharted is this, right? Was technically Uncharted this, this this one that they would make technically like Uncharted Six if you count Golden Abyss, right? Well, uh, technically Seven if you do Lost Legacy as its own standard right, thing, right? Right. So, like, what? How, how many gods God of Wars have there been since this this remake, this reimagining of the character, right? Um, and people get nervous of that because they don't want PlayStation just to do the same thing Mm -hmm. and i understand that fear um but the one thing that i i would stress to people is it's not like it's like sony's quality control is shit look we forget about a kill strain we'll forget about a concrete genie we'll even forget about a dreams games that don't light the world on fire because we get the ghosts because we get the uncharted because we get the god of wars because we get the spider-man right um because we get the demon souls it's it's those games that we forget about some of the failures, and you know when when I see this like Sony is um, obsessing over blockbusters and and not prioritizing small teams. Though I understand that when I take a look at what Sony has been for the past three four years, it's been nothing but blockbusters. Like we've gotten a Concrete Genie and a Dreams every now and again, but for the most part, it is. Games that you stop, you notice, you look, and your attention is solely focused on that, right? For that one month, it sucks all the oxygen out of the room. That's what Sony's about. They're about delivering the blockbusters and the exclusives. And that's what they've always been about. And that's what they've always been, for the most part, really good at. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, before I, I and lose, I'm sorry, I went lose, on that long rant. No, you're fine. Before I lose some thoughts here. Yes, they. Yeah. They've been focused on blockbusters for a long time, and I think we're that that's the reason why we love PlayStation is because these blockbusters hit and they're very very good. I yeah. think those are people who are upset of these smaller studios not giving a chance to shine. Where were you when Concrete Genie was out, for example? Did you play it? Did you enjoy it? We love it here. It's a fantastic yep. game. It yep. did not sell nearly as well as those blockbuster titles. And I think uh, number three is something that. PlayStation is doing very well on, thanks to Shuhei Yoshida, friend of the show, following us on Twitter, 
he's yeah. head of indies, and I think indies are getting the spotlight and a great big deal to fill that void of not having a smaller studio within PlayStation Studios doing those smaller experiences. Like we're we're getting the the stray, we're getting Akina, we're getting uh, Little Devil Inside, Jet the Far Shore, Bug Snacks was Fantastic a major point. PS Plus thing. Like there are these smaller indie things that they are looking outside to fill in that void. And number four, we're getting other third party PlayStation exclusives that are brand new IPs such as Square Enix's Forspoken. That's a brand new thing that is only going to be on PlayStation and that is, yeah, for the time being. But that is filling that void of having uh, breaking up the the next entry in these long running series and I think that is a strategic thing that PlayStation is doing and I think that's working extremely well. So when Mm -hmm. I hear that whole like yeah, they're only doing sequels and like third. Per- they're not. You're just focusing on that. You're not diving in and, and looking. You don't for get the full picture things. because yeah. you, I think you what you hit, Kyle, is I think the best point. Yes, the, you you may see less um, smaller titles out of PlayStation and your concrete. Chains. I mean, hell, Housemark. They gave money to give Housemark a to do a brand new AAA IP that's coming out in 30 days. Right. I think PlayStation gamers are just so like not okay with being a drought. Like they're they're not okay with not having PlayStation <laughs> news being thrown at them. And right. when I think Benji Sales on Twitter hit the nail on the head when he was Friend like and Adam Leonard too. They both were like, listen, as soon as PlayStation comes and shows off these shiny new trailers, all this negative PlayStation talk is going to go away. We've just yeah. gone a long time from seeing Horizon, of seeing what this God of War Ragnarok is. Even Ratchet, I think, has been a while since we've seen new stuff from it. Yeah. I mean, Benji Sales, here it is. The reality is, this comes from his Twitter, PS5 is a sales monster. In the UK, for example, March was the second best month of sales since launch, and the US MPD will also be huge. Sony just needs to start showing games soon, Horizon, God of War, etc., and the online negativity will shift away a lot. Part of the problem is we really haven't seen much of the pipeline on PS5 from PlayStation Studios, and it leads towards negativity online feeling stronger. Only seen a reveal trailer for Horizon, only a logo for God of War, and most of the rest of PlayStation's first party studios is unknown. Even Ratchet, uh, uh, and Clank, Rift Apart, hasn't been a major update in seven, th- seven months. Obviously, COVID is, is a factor, mm-hmm. but, uh, if Sony and I definitely think, a uh, major upcoming showcase reveal of their teams needs to be a high priority soon. Once people see games, things improve. Yeah. So I think Benji's right on the money here. I think once you see games, things will improve. It's the fact that Sony has just been so non, you know, non-verbal with us yeah. for so long. It's been so dry with news. And Kyle, what I think you said earlier is dead on the money. Like you don't need to focus on smaller teams because you can help fund an indie like Kina or get the marketing rights to a Kina or get, you know, bug snacks on a PlayStation yeah. Plus. You can find weird games that you think translate to your audience well and market them that way. And you don't have to have these small teams making really yeah. weird stuff. Or you I mean, can even have small teams mm-hmm. like indies make a pat upon too or whatever yeah. have you, right? Like, I mean, look at how many times we joked about it how many times did we see odd world on a playstation stage exactly that's a small team that's getting the spotlight and it is a playstation plus game for this month and it's a game that resonates with playstation gamers it has a lineage there Mm -hmm. and i do think that we are at this point listen last week was not a was 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 not a good week for playstation right we've been seeing the moves been made by Xbox in terms of buying Bethesda, in terms of Outriders being as huge of a success as it is, the rumors of Game Pass uh, getting Battlefield 6, you know, MLB the show, a Sony, you know, made game being on Game Pass as well. We're seeing Xbox make some big money moves here and PlayStation kind of sitting on their hands and not doing much or or seemingly not doing much. Mm -hmm. And so like, what I see here as well, Kyle, and I want to get your thoughts in, on it. If we only care about sequels, 
then what is Ben Studios then working on? Yeah, I I, I don't know. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I I think Ben's super talented. I I, yeah. I want to see what they like. I said I love Days Gone. I think they're super they're they're a talent, talented studio, and I, I'm excited to see what they have. Could they be going back to again long lineage of games and bring back Siphon Filter? Like, it's, is it a brand new franchise, uh, like it says in this, or is it re- resurrecting an IP and, and giving new life to it? Um, I'm just, ex- I'm, I'm excited for them. And I think that what you you bring up in your question is bring up another par- point of this article that I want to hit, where a lot of people are running with PlayStation is afraid to take risks, Right. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they're afraid to take risks with their games and their studios and whatnot. And within the last, let's see, 2017 was Horizon, right? Yeah. So within the last four years, they let Gorilla, who's known for, or that's even before four years ago, but like they let Gorilla go from making Killzone games to a wildly different genre and make Horizon an action RPG, open world action RPG. They let Sucker Punch go from making uh, superhero games to a very not fantastical, grounded samurai open world game in Ghost of Tsushima, which was fantastic. They are letting these major studios take risks and and giving them all the power to do that. Uh, And and I I think what Dave Lang in this article with the Iron Galaxy Studios thing does ring true, and I think it's a solid point. I know I feel this way. Mm. Uh, the people funding the work are often risk averse. And if they have to pick between a team that's done it before and someone trying to do it on their own for the first time, I can see why some people pick the prior developer over the latter. Yeah. I want, it's like, <laughs> this is definitely a fat boy, uh, uh, note here. A- an analogy. If I want a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich, I go to the place I know makes the best bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. You don't go and and try (laughs) go to another deli down the road that you know doesn't do great work and get a sandwich from there because it's not going to be as good. Yeah. So go with what you know. And when it comes to pre-established IPs, like in this case, they wanted to do a remake of Last of Us and remake Uncharted. Yeah. Why not come to the table with a brand new IP? In that case, instead of relying on things that were already established, I think if if this small team, I, I'm all over the place right now. I apologize, but the small oh, team no that decided they wanted to make an Uncharted and that got warped into Last of Us, why not bring a brand new idea? And mm-hmm. instead of if you if you really wanted to be break out of just being a support team, why not just bring a brand new thing out there? I mean, I think I, I I think that may be easier said than done. Sure, yeah. Right? This is me yeah. sitting at my computer desk, not knowing how game <laughs> development works, and saying that I get yeah. that. Yeah, but I and I I'm totally with you there, and I and I think that, and maybe I raise this question to you, and maybe this is the title of the show: is what is going on at PlayStation? Um, I you know, I, it's seemingly like we don't know. It's seemingly like Xbox has been in charge of this narrative this whole whole last few weeks. And um, it's it's kind of like, how do I say this? It's like on Thanksgiving when you see on Twitter, everyone's already eaten already and your drink is taking longer. (laughs) And you're so hungry. You want to eat now. (laughs) And and the cook's like, just give me five more minutes. Like, what are you doing there? Yeah. It, it, what is going on at, at PlayStation right now? Because this these aren't good stories. And it's either, mm-hmm. again, like I, I, I said it, I think, on this week's show, it's either Jim Ryan has the best poker face ever or they're really this arrogant. And I think the, one of the biggest the biggest um, takeaways I read last night, thanks to, I think, uh, TPR on our Discord, was he, he linked this uh, Vita developer. Uh, former Sony head or, or Sony uh, developer, and th- th- the question was raised: Do you think arrogant Sony is back? Do you think PS3 Sony of arrogance is back? And he said, "the the 
the success of PlayStation 4 has definitely gotten to their head. Mm -hmm. What's going on at PlayStation right now? Why isn't anybody controlling this? Is it, do they really think that it's better just to let the fire burn? Mm. Like where, where does Sony go from here, man? Because it is frustrating to see again, like this story isn't negative. No, it's It's not, but everybody's perceiving it that way. Yeah. And yeah, it's definitely not negative. It's something I think we all kind of just knew anyway. I think that's what I meant earlier where we have different ideas about this and thoughts because yeah, like of course, they're probably making another Uncharted game. Of course, they're probably making another Last of Us game. Um, like, this isn't really, like, news news. Yeah. But I can see why people are upset. I can see why people are wanting these smaller teams to... Or smaller teams to get a chance to shine. I totally understand that. And I'm with you. I would love a smaller studio to make a PlayStation new PlayStation IP or franchise and, and get the love it deserves. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I think if they let the fight, just sit back and let the fire burn, they're just waiting for other video game developers and corporations like Microsoft and, and Nintendo to just throw another log on the fire and let it go even longer with, yeah. with another news news drop on their end. So, I think they need to say something fast. I think they need. I think everyone around this in the in the PlayStation community needs to just pump the brakes and be a little bit more patient. Mm. We're not at the same level of what we were last year, where we're like, "Tell us about the PlayStation Five." Why aren't you telling no. us about the? I don't think we're at that point yet. I think we're at that point, but it's in a more negative light. I I, like, I don't think we're there yet. Really? Okay. I think we're there. I mean, we, I keep on seeing this the the quote from Sean Layden um, when it was at, I believe, a PSX. And yeah. He, he was talking about, um, I forget the game, but he says it wasn't a multi million seller, but that's not the point. And that's, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that quote's being thrown out so much. It is. It's, like, it's a good quote. I agree with that. It's a good that. quote. But is it, like, necessarily accurate? Like, are, let's, let, let, let's get the shields down for a second. Let's, let's, Try to think this through. Yeah. Uh, we don't f- feel like any of this is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Again, Last of Us, cool. Uh, Days Gone, not happening. That sucks for some. Personally, I didn't care for it. Yeah. But Ben Studios getting to make something else. Mm-hmm. That's been greenlit. But then seeing, and maybe this, you know, the Sony weirdness may be stepping away. You're not getting your fat princesses. You're not mm. getting your patapons. You're not getting these weird little games that have that cult following. Like, it, it, it are we going to lose the weird magic of PlayStation, mm. Kyle? Because we said it. Listen, these these small games we can hand them off to indies, and and you know, Shu can can see what aligns with them well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and go it that way. But is there something to this argument that, hey, we're not letting maybe a Pixel Opus really, really do something strange and unique? Or we're not letting Media Molecule, you know, we're not marketing dreams the way that, you know, some others think that they should be marketing it or supporting it? Yeah. Do you I, think there's truth there, though? There is truth there. I do. Okay. I, I do think PlayStation is getting a little bit more mainstream. And not mm-hmm. as weird as I would like. Um, doesn't make it less bad. It just mm-hmm. means we won't get a thing like Tomba from PlayStation 1. Or this feral kid that would jump on you and bite you on the head and throw you. That's how you would get rid of enemies. And evil pigs <laughs> taking over the world. <laughs> like That's what that game's about. Like That's... Yeah. I, I don't think... I, I think we're far away from get being weird with PlayStation because everything is so, like, cinematic and blockbuster, um, mm-hmm. which I love, but we're not going to get those weird PlayStation things that I think, looking back on the history of PlayStation, is like, yeah, that's what makes PlayStation PlayStation because of those mm-hmm. weird little experiences. And I don't know how they get it back other than... 
relying on indie developers and these third party deals uh, for exclusives. I think that's the the way they're going to go unless somebody really blows them away with a a pitch for a PlayStation IP that is weird. I I I, I don't see them going back to those days where we were getting them on a regular basis. Next question and probably the the final question. I think we see the way Sony has handled backwards compatibility like shit. Let's all be honest. Yep. Getting rid of the stores is one thing, but giving people only five months to get those PS3, PSP, or Vita games before those stores close down isn't enough time. Um, I understand that criticism, right? I definitely do. Because at least Nintendo was just like, yeah, we're going to give you a couple of years. Here's, here's how we're phasing them out. Sony's like, no, we're going to still continue to sell these dev kits. Uh, until we make an announcement that we're closing it down by by not even the end of the year. I get it. That's a shitty move. I also understand that we see, you know, Bethesda leave, and that hurts a lot of us out there. We see Phil Spencer paying Arcane to delay <laughs> Deathloop, and we get nervous. <laughs> we see MLB The Show become... That's a joke, everyone. That's not... Lunatics think that. The deep state. Oh, could you uh, imagine... Oh, could you? We see MLB The Show be on Game Pass, and I think that's the straw that really has truly broke the camel's back here. I think that's the the thing that people are actually upset about. Do we see PlayStation start to pivot? Because it seems like they're not risk-averse because games are getting more and more and more expensive to make. And this money goes back to the studios to make the safe game. Do you see them pivot to a Game Pass-like service? Or a service that may allow them to make some more crazy moves? Or do you think that's just not in Sony's character? That Sony's strategy is just, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Hmm. I do think they're working on something. Okay. I, I, I... I do think they're not that stupid to see this wildly popular thing and successful thing and not attempt a version of their own. I think we saw that with the baby steps of the PS plus collection on PS five, mm-hmm. where you have all these games that are just part of your PS plus collection and they're major, major games that define PlayStation four with some notable exceptions, which I still find weird or not part of that thing. Um, but they have to be making something or, or at mm-hmm. least, cooking it up like i think we're in this weird intersection of games right now mm-hmm. where microsoft has the services they just don't have the games yet yeah sony has the games but they don't have the services and i definitely think sony is on a bit of a borrowed time in terms of they need to make something fast that's going to drive people to look at playstation in a competitive light uh, because right now, I don't see, and I think the biggest problem here is Sony's not being arrogant. I think Sony's not being competitive in the value market mm-hmm. where Xbox is. And it's just fact. Mm-hmm. And I think if we had a service that is comparable, PS Now ain't it. You know, it, not yet. It could be there. It could be that service, but not yet. If we see a service truly rise up, and and really get that Sony weird in there, uh, mixed with seeing some of those first party games make their way onto the service. Again, we talked about a bit about this, I think, last week. I think that's when you're going to see people actually start changing their tune because Benji's right to a degree. Once we see what Sony's working on, we're going to get whew, a little bit relieved. Mm. But at the same exact time. I don't think you're a Sony gamer out there that wouldn't like a service like Game Pass or Sony to have a competitive service that says, hey, here's our legacy of games on this one service. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think there's a Sony fan out there that really wouldn't want to see that. And I think if Sony can, I think that would allow them to gain revenue that is that that will let them go in more strange and different directions. And I think until Sony actually starts talking, and I think this article may be the straw that breaks the camel's back here, it is it is 
the thing that they're going to have to address very soon. Yeah. Is now this is the last question, and then we're done here. I, 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 I yeah, something because it popped in my head. I, I do want to say, I do want Sony and I, to move away of relying on Naughty Dog as much as they do a little bit. Mm-hmm. Love yeah. Naughty Dog. Love the games they make. Sure. But don't have like. I feel like they're the teacher's pet. Yeah. And there's every studio you have are super talented and on that same level. So like spread the love a little bit and not put so much stock into this one studio like they are with all these other support studios helping them out. Yeah. Like I think they can do it. Just take their time. Yeah. Just take your time. Yeah. I, I'm right there with you. I think at the end of the day, I think some studios deserve that chance. And I think maybe that is the, the what what the article has or, or raises is, is Sony really willing to make those chances mm-hmm. or take those chances? Um, you know, we talked about it a little last episode. Again, please make sure you listen to last week or, or the episode prior. Um, with this news now out, now we know a little bit of how Sony is functioning. Do you really think Jim Ryan's doing a good job as a consumer? Ooh. Do we do we really miss Sean Layden? Do we really miss Andy House? I, I mean, personally, I do. Yeah, just just as personalities. Because I think the biggest problem with Sony is that I feel like I'm talking to a PR machine and I'm not talking to a person. That's and where, point. listen, I'm not into Microsoft games, but. You know, Aaron Greenberg will actually reply to me uh, on on Twitter. It's a great point. You know, they they feel like people, and Jim Ryan doesn't speak to me. And it's weird with games and nothing else here, but like Jim Ryan doesn't speak to me as he plays games. And when I mean plays games, is I don't think he really understands the medium, and mm-hmm. that's the thing that I get from him. Too and much hope, like on the business back end kind of way thing. too much yeah. on the business back end. And that doesn't give me faith in his leadership as much as a Sean Layden is. Mm. Right. Because I, I knew that Sean Layden had an admiration of this medium. He might not be scoring, you know, 360 no scopes in Call of Duty, but he understood what makes games tick. But, and I think yeah. that's the biggest disconnect here is that Jack, uh, Jack Ryan, Jim Ryan feels like you're about um, to bring back stepdad. Jack Trenton. For a I was about to bring Jackie T back uh, that Jim Ryan feels like a stepdad. And he doesn't get this these these kids that are in his house. But is, you know is that mean? not why they split it up and why Herman is first party studios? Who knows? We don't know. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like, what's going on at PlayStation? Your guess is as good as mine. And I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still going to, after we're done, I'm still going to play games on my PlayStation 5. I'm still... Absolutely. <laughs> that's yeah. That's not like... No, and, no. and I, I but think... But here's the question yeah. here, too. I'm the all over the place. I've, don't worry about it. Yeah. Real last question. Todd Oxford brings up this question. You brought it up a little bit as well. Why does Nintendo get away with it? Why does Nintendo get to make game after game, game after game? Uh, You know, say Mario, say Mario, not have a Game Pass-esque service, Mm -hmm. have an online service that is beyond anemic and charge you for, doesn't even have a party chat. Why does Sony, why does Nintendo get away with that? Why, why, why are people still buying Nintendos? (laughs) Nintendos like I'm an 80 year old man. (laughs) Uh, I don't know why they get away with it and getting away even though is is maybe like a a too strong of a word now that I'm saying it out loud Mm -hmm. it's just like that's what their that's what their community wants I guess like they they're fine with the Mario and the Zelda and and the Pokemon and, and like and the Kirby's I guess to a lesser extent like I I I don't think they need I don't know. I'm flip flopping all over the place today. I don't know. Go for it's, it. Like I don't. I don't know if they have to bring. Oh, man, sorry, I'm butchering this. I one. stumped you on this question. You did. I fucking got him, audience. <laughs> well, you think about it. You interrupt me when you're done. I got him. Good for me. I don't think they need to like. It's not like Nintendo gets away with it. Their fans complain. They holler. They moan about it. But. You can't get a Nintendo experience anywhere else. 
Mm. You can't get a platformer as good as Mario anywhere else. You can't get a game like Zelda anywhere else. Their games are, though in the same genres as so many others, so unique and so Nintendo. Mm. That, yes, it may be an anemic system with a bad online that treats its, its audience like shit constantly. May, you know, even punish the creators that make their content. But their content is so good that you put up with it. So, to me, the only reason why Sony does not get away with shenanery like this is the simple <laughs> fact that they're in direct competition with Xbox. They do compete for so many of the similar games third party that, yeah, those comparisons get drawn because it's way easier to because they actually have competition in front of each other. Mm -hmm. That's why I think Sony doesn't get away with it. Because Todd Oxra asked that question. I was like, that's a good question. Because Nintendo is, I think, out of all of them, the least friendly and the least forward-thinking, yet makes buku amounts of money. Yeah, that's a good point. I would just throw in, like, the nostalgia factor there. Yeah. We all, Most of us grew up playing Nintendo, first and foremost. I know, I do. Same. And, yeah. I, and I think that's what it relies on. And, like you said, you, you don't get that experience anywhere else. Um... Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess that's why they're they're sticking to what they do best, and what they do is it's pretty damn good. Almost like what Sony's doing. Yeah, sticking to what they do the best. Yeah, crazy how that works. Abs bonkers, gang. That's been the emergency episode of the Trophy Room. Is the house on fire? I would. It's getting kind of foggy in the house for some reason. Yeah, but we'll, we'll only time will tell. Yeah. And I think by this summer... Dwight, and Dwight, has, locked, you want. Dwight has locked everyone in the <laughs> office, <laughs> pulled the fire alarm and some yep. fake smoke. There, there's there's some stuff going on in there. There's He's some stuff us. going on. Yeah. And I think the, the, the true test lies in the next few weeks and months. And I think by the summer, we'll know what Sony we're talking to, which is sad that it's come to that case. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. We don't know if the murderer is in the room. <laughs> only <laughs> we got to see there's dead bodies somewhere, but <laughs> only time will tell. Kyle, where can people find you before we get on out of here? You can find all my incoherent ramblings on Twitter at Mr. K Steph and on PSN and follow all the indie coverage that I do over at 61indie.com and 61indie everywhere else. And you can find me over at Mr. Badbit and at PS Trophy Room on Twitter is where you get the show uh, on Twitter and all of what we do there. Uh, with that said, I do want to thank uh, our patrons that make this show possible. I want to thank our platinum producer, Todd Burowitz, and Too Soon. I want to thank our gold members, Chaotic Monkey, Gavin Goffrey, Griffin West, Jose Jimenez, Jedi Master Ren, and uh, Metal Kirby. I want to thank our Silver Plus members, Hide Indoors, Marcus O'Neill, oh, which is right, JB the Purple Monkey, J. Just Fulton Metal, Tim Ulf, and Justin Rod. We guess. Thank you all so very much uh, for supporting us the ways you do. And again, you can support us over at uh, patreon.com slash PS Trophy Room. So with all that said, and with all that out of the way, everybody, keep your wits about you, keep hunting, and keep playing PlayStation. You say bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. <laughs>